Good afternoon, this is Joe Mullings. I'm here in San Francisco at the MedTech Strategist Innovation Summit in San Fran. And I've got the lovely Kayleen Brown with me from the MedTech Strategist and also host of Meet the Innovators, right? That's correct, and I'm so privileged to be here. Thanks, Joe. That's great to have you here. Would you uh, sort of introduce yourself uh, maybe with the uh, people in the audience who might not know who the MedTech Strategist is? Absolutely. So first, I'd be surprised if people don't know who MedTech Strategist is. In one iteration or another, we've been together for 30 years. I've been with the group for 12 years. Uh, I am the host of the Meet the Innovators series, which is a video interview series that we just launched this year and have just finished its second season of filming at the Center for Device Innovation at Texas Medical Center, cool. going into our third season in Dublin, Ireland at MedTech Strategist Innovation Summit Dublin, which will be in April. Uh, so please check out our website to get more details on be that. There. We were there last year. It's an awesome summit. It's probably my favorite, if I'm going to be honest, and only because of the venue is so intimate. And we almost got in trouble with the fire department last year because we were past capacity. I remember that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so back to MedTech Strategist, uh, we have a conference business, and that's where we are today. We have three uh, uh, three conferences as part of our Innovation Summit series, and that is an investment and networking conference mm -hmm. where we get startup medical device companies to present for 10 minutes, and then we also have the titans and the influencers of the industry who come out, and they speak in panels and keynotes, and everybody walks away with a little bit more knowledge, more strategy, and hopefully a better corporate strategy for the long term. Yeah, and, and for those who haven't attended, what's really, um, I think, mind-bending to me is the intimacy, and I always say this, the intimacy of the show. Because you can be sitting there and literally next to you are some of the top docs uh, or some of the key decision makers out of the strategics uh, or some of the most influential VCs. And one room, and Giovanni Loricella from our firm calls it the, uh, the mini MBA, right, for the state of affairs yes. in med tech. And so I, I would agree with that. And if, you're not, if you haven't attended, do yourself a favor, at attend the show. Um, what I'm interested in, because it's sort of a little bit along the lines of what we try and do, is the Meet the Innovators. And while MedTech Strategist is renowned for covering some killer tech and emerging tech, uh, Meet the Innovators Index is a little bit more towards people. Can you share with the audience a little bit about that? Absolutely. So MedTech Strategist, our publication, is really the cornerstone of what we do. And that's where our writers will deep dive into mergers and acquisitions and startup profiles. And they do an incredible job. It's why I've been in this industry for 12 years. I am with the best of the best. What I wanted to do this year, and with the help of our leadership, and with MedTech Strategist support, is I wanted to show the story behind the technologies. People invest in people. Mm -hmm. Over my 12 years with MedTech Strategist and the different iterations of our publication and our conferences, I worked on the investment side of the business, and I worked with startups. That has been a really hard process to see how hard these startups work to get in front of investors and how investors have to make decisions based off a two-dimensional piece of paper mm -hmm. or a PowerPoint presentation. That's not what's going to lead your company. And two of the main reasons that investments and partnerships fail would be financial issues, which I can't help with, right. but personality conflicts, if you can believe it, Joe. Mm -hmm. And in our industry, I mean, it just surprises me that such a small issue could cause the collapse of a multi-million dollar deal. And I wanted to give a platform for these startups, for these innovators, to share not just what they're doing, but why they're doing it, so that we fall in love with them, not just in the technology. And the overarching goal here and the hope is that strategic partners and investors fall in love with these innovators, get to understand their personality, fall in love with that passion. And then they read our publication, of course, so they get a chance to do the deeper dive of the profile of the startup right. company. And then they're able to make not just a more educated guess, but a guess that is, I, I would say, more productive time-wise, and I think it starts the relationship up, uh, relationship up much stronger. Mm -hmm. There's more confidence. Mm -hmm. um, there's that shared passion, I would say, in our industry. We all, all, all of us are in this industry because we want to accelerate device innovation. We're all in here for improved patient care and quality of life. 
that doesn't, I mean, that carries over to the venture capitalist side of the world or the finance side of the world, and then the innovator side of the world. So to give a new platform a way to share your story is mm -hmm. what I've been so honored to be able to host and be a part of. It's been a smashing success. Uh, some of my startups, I, I feel as though I'm part of their world now and to hear some of the successes that they've had from my small influence, from MedTech Strategist's small influence has been really amazing. I've got to meet some of the best people and it just keeps going, keeps getting better. You know, you bring up a really interesting point. So our firm has been in uh, MedTech search for 27 years and more than 7,000 placements in MedTech and 80% of our business are emerging tech startups. And I've sat on the uh, couch as the proverbial uh, psychologist for the venture people, as well as the CEOs who are getting sort of knocked off, and then the companies that are struggling. Uh, last week, we were I sat on a panel at Harvard, and on that was uh, quite a few uh, luminaries in the startup world. And invariably, it came back to EQ versus IQ. And the individuals who understood how to lead their team, not lead the technology, um, classically were more successful, depending on how you define success and outcomes, than if those who just indexed exclusively towards IQ. So do you have some special guests or uh, people that you interviewed that like the IQ versus the EQ on this person or either way really impressed you? Too many to count. Okay. But one in particular sticks out because he was actually the inspiration for the concept a number of years ago. So to take it back about four years, this is when I got the idea and I did some market research. So I attended uh, trade shows and industry events and workshop this idea around. During that process, I met a man named Richard Hanbury with Santa Health. And Richard told me his story, that he had gotten in a car accident and has, was given only five years to live because of the pain. Mm. Uh, the quality of life is so low. And he didn't accept those odds. He didn't accept that. So he went out, used his engineering degree, and created a device that not only helps with pain relief and has now has a proof of concept, which is very exciting, uh, but it's actually transcending into a more commercial industry as well. So there's a, it's gonna, a device that can be used for transatlantic flights and put you immediately into REM sleep. So your body, instead of going from fight and flight, it can go into recovery. And that's actually one of the problems with pain is your body never gets the opportunity to recover. Hmm. It's always in fight or flight. So his device brings you into REM sleep so you are able to recover. Best part of this story, so I met uh, Richard four years, three, four years ago, heard this great story, used this story as, uh, among a couple of other ones to really emphasize what I was trying to do with Meet the Innovators. This year, I'm so proud to share that Richard actually is the winner of the MedTech Innovator Program. At AdvaMed, the MedTech Conference sure. this year, he took home the $500,000. I cried like a baby. <laughs> and to see this, this person who inspired me get on a stage and be able to inspire thousands of people with his firm belief that he will not accept the world the way it is and right. that he will change the world. I'm getting goosebumps I now just that. thinking awesome. about it. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I will never forget him. Yeah. He was biggest and you shared his story with the rest of the industry. Absolutely. So I got to interview Richard as a complete coincidence. So season two, I was very, very privileged to be invited to Center for Device Innovation at Texas Medical Center mm -hmm. in Houston, Texas mm -hmm. this year to film season two. And without my knowledge, the first interview of the first day was Richard Hanbury. He pulls up, I pull up to him, we smile, we hug like old friends. And I knew without question season two was going to be the best yet just having him in the seat next to me That's and to awesome. come full circle That's was awesome. really great. And that was before he won. So now I can say I knew him when. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to get that device because sometimes I just can't fall asleep. Is that, is that, is that a 510K? I believe, ooh, I don't want to misquote okay. because that's very no, important in the it. tech right, space. Right, right. That's true. Um, that's right. But do go to Santa Health, which is S A N A Health dot com, and yep. you'll have more information there. Awesome. Or just hit up Richard on social media. Icky, call Rena. Tell her I need one of those machines to fall asleep. <laughs> Can you make it too? <laughs> <laughs> so, medtech strategist, um, what does the world probably not know that they should know? 
That's a really great question. I think that's why we're in our business. That's why we do what we do, is we answer those questions that, or maybe even not answer the questions. We're telling you the questions you should be asking mm. and then helping you figure out those answers. Mm -hmm. So I would say that Metric Strategist is really about developing your day-to-day -day and corporate strategy, excuse me, day-to-day -day strategy, and then your long-term cor corporate strategy. And that evolves and it changes. And I would even say, talking kind of about news, we're in media together, so kind of thinking about mainstream media, the news cycle used to be this 24-hour news cycle. Right. Before it wasn't. Right. I'm a millennial, so for me, it's always been a 24-hour right. news cycle, right. and now it's a 24-second news cycle. Yeah, that's true. So I think the industry uh, as, a, it, as a whole really needs medtech strategists to help guide them through these 24-second changes. Mm -hmm. uh, mergers and acquisitions impact Every, I mean, it has this uh, rippling mm -hmm. effect, and our industry, mm -hmm. as you know, is so small, so intimate, so familial, that what we do is we help you navigate these waters and have a place to go to ask the questions that you need to ask. And then we propose these questions so that you start thinking differently. So what I think the industry doesn't know, you have to subscribe to find out. You have to come to the Innovation Summit conferences, which are very intimate, as you mm -hmm. mentioned before. Mm -hmm. But the main point of those is to get those questions answered and to get new questions asking. And that's what our panels do. That is what our keynotes do. We start making you think strategically. Yeah, you really do do that. And again, I, this is not a commercial or pitch for MedTech strategists at all, but once we introduce it to our organization, if, if you're in... MedTech and you're an emerging tech company, the amount of information you get out of, obviously I think whether it's 17 issues per year as far as in print, okay. and then mm -hmm. the history you get and the library and legacy you can go back and pull off of will give you insights as to what other people did in your market. So maybe you're not a headhunting firm, right? Maybe you're not a marketing firm. Maybe you are a MedTech company. Why would I not want to go see the last 16 articles on surgical robotics? Or why would I not go see what Israel thinks about structural heart? Right? And then create a, at least a more intelligent approach to the market, maybe a reimbursement strategy, maybe there's another doc in there that could have been a KOL that I might be able to you know, align with. So I think that's a, a, a really good research tool, no matter who you are. And I, and I can't believe that probably VCs and private equity are probably your lowest subscribers surprisingly they do show up surprisingly okay. no, on, on, on the print on yeah, the print we, side we have a healthy print. readership okay. for Good. but not as much we, what we <clears throat> believe is that everybody should be subscribing yeah. of course yeah guys your fees and your two points <laughs> subscribe to the audience. that 20 dollars will get into your <laughs> mailbox later um, but i do really appreciate what you're saying and you couldn't be more right i think that um david kasik and steve levin went into this idea of keeping metech strategists about insightful, perspective, actionable intelligence, mm -hmm. which I think all four of those are really important. We're inundated with information. We're inundated with data. We are not a database. We're not here to provide you with that. We're providing you with the insight, the why. Yeah. And that's something that I think we do very beautifully. And so you uh, appreciate, again, your support and your readership, Joe. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I love it. It's self-serving, but it is a great uh, uh, sort of organization. And talking about that, you and your team have been courageous enough to jump into media feet first, right? Yes. Us being a pioneer, uh, let alone a med tech and never in, in, in search and, and head hunting. Uh, I know how much courage that takes. I know the commitment from leadership. Uh, I know the commitment from the CFO. <laughs> um, but can you tell us why you've jumped in both feet and what it means to your readership and even to your organization. Absolutely. So it's my responsibility, it's our responsibility to get this information out there and accelerate device innovation. Mm -hmm. and that's the only way that I can do that. So last year, I met with our chief business officer, Christy Kennedy. I had been with again, the Metech Strategist Group for eight years prior, went off to um, explore other medical device companies and learn as much as I possibly could. And we felt last year was a really good time for me to bring in my skill set. I am the MedTech millennial. I'm the oldest millennial in our industry, but I am still on that cusp of a MedTech millennial. So I actually feel I have the privilege of seeing media in particular from Generation Y and Millennial. I'm that bridge right in the middle of it. I wasn't raised with a smartphone. I didn't have internet growing up in high school, uh, but in college is when I really got all of those devices. And 
it gives me a healthy respect for the other way of uh, interpreting information and absorbing information. So what I wanted to do with MedTech Strategist, with Christy Kennedy's guidance and David and Stephen's support, of course, was to try to apply that to our industry where we do have an older readership mm -hmm. and to give more options and more ways to digest information. Being reading, you know, text is not the only way people digest. Mm -hmm. Video, as you know, is extremely important. Mm -hmm. A picture is worth a thousand words, mm -hmm. so video must be worth one trillion, yeah. I suppose, if you yeah. think of frames per second. Um, and I just wanted to show off our industry, which I don't think has ever really been done. And to take it back a little bit, um, I'm the only person in my family who's went into the business world, and especially medical devices. And a joke we have is that nobody really knows what a medical device is until you need one. That's true. What I wanted to do is I wanted to share why I fall in love with this industry. I wanted to show why we should care and why this matters and give hope back to patients and hope back to families. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we're doing that is by trying to change the way we say hello. And that's with our website, that's with our branding, that's with the images we put out, the Meet the Innovators series. We're revamping our publication. I'll give you a little insider secret here. We are creating a new subscriber portal that will be out next year. I could not be more excited. We're designing that in-house and workshopping it as well. And that will just be another avenue for people to explore our content and other content. Um, so I'm just trying to give our information and show our industry why I've fallen in love with it and why it matters. Yeah, awesome. And, and I love the video component a lot. Uh, not enough people understand the effort and again the commitment that needs to go into it but you can really get the visceral engagement with the person on the other end to your point reading an article is cool uh, looking at a snapshot it's cool uh, but it's a moment in time but when you can leave together again the words the intention uh, and again the feeling the person's conveying it does come across on video especially if it's done well so bravo to you and bravo to MedTech strategists and the uh, leadership team there. I appreciate it. And likewise, I mean, I think that what you're doing is not just impressive, but I think it's giving inspiration to a lot of other industry members uh, mm -hmm. that they can do it too, maybe not as well mm -hmm. as Joe Mullings, the Mullings group does it, mm -hmm. but um, that they can pull out their iPhone X or their smartphone That's and right. start recording in 1080 DPI. You don't <laughs> even need 4K and just start doing it and start showing us what you've got. Yeah, and, and, and it's true. And a lot of times it's just fear of being judged. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I just, I just threw caution to the wind. I'm like, the hell with this. I've never cared anyway. Uh, and, and, it's, and it's really provided tremendous benefits to our clients, the candidates in the marketplace, uh, educating people how to think about their careers uh, the same way that MedTech Strategist is educating people how to think about their market. Well said. Uh, and then knowing what questions to ask. And, and I love that line, so I'm going I'm to steal that from you. <laughs> well, the conference is starting yes. very soon. Yes. I really appreciate you <laughs> taking time out from your busy schedule and your team allowing you to break free. Uh, well, Joe, it was absolutely my honor, my privilege. Thank you again for partnering with us. And I can't wait to do more things with you in the future. Yeah, Best of luck. Looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So Joe Mullings with Kayleen Brown leaving you, heading over across the hall to the MedTech Strategist Innovation Summit here in San Fran 2018. Stay tuned, more to come.